what psychosocial factors may contribute to gender dysphoria in children. They could be simply innocent family dynamics that the child is misperceiving. He's, he or she is misperceiving them in a way such that they subconsciously internalize my biological sex either isn't safe or isn't lovable. In some cases, a parent may have desperately wanted a girl, but they got a boy instead. They are deeply depressed and the child will sense this and feel as though they have failed the parent by being the wrong sex. There's also a phenomenon called rapid onset gender dysphoria. Now, in this case, um, we have young teenagers who may have a history of depression or anxiety or other psychological problems when they were younger, but they never had any issues with their biological sex or gender identity. We are now beginning to see that when these kids are encouraged to socially and medically transition, um, there's early evidence that this is not good for them, that their mental health actually gets worse. Some children who have been uh, physically abused or sexually abused will certainly dissociate from their biological sex, dissociate from their bodies. Their sexual abuse or physical abuse, that also causes them to internalize, I'm not safe or lovable in my biological sex. You take a normal child and you give them a drug that prevents a normal process. You have just diseased that child. You are arresting their bone growth. You are stopping them from developing secondary sex characteristics. You're arresting their brain development. Cross-sex hormones are toxic. We know that they are associated with cardiac disease, strokes, diabetes, different sorts of cancers, and more. They impact the psychological and emotional development of these children as well. A biological girl, if she takes her testosterone daily for one year at age 15, then by age 16, she may consent to a double mastectomy. There are already cases of young women who are now in their late 20s who transitioned, they were told by doctors and therapists that their psychological distress was all due to their being transgender. They went on the testosterone, they got their double mastectomies, and now as 20-somethings, almost 30 years old, they realize, I am a woman. I always was, I was born, I was born female, I always was female and always will be. Oh my gosh, what did I do? My breasts are gone. Their fertility is gone. They have permanent changes from the testosterone that they took. Deep voice, five o'clock shadow, enlarged Adam's apple. These women are enraged. There is absolutely no study that's been published to prove that transitioning young children prevents suicide. The best study we have with regard to transition is in adults. And it's the best study because it lasted for 30 years. And it was done in Sweden. A very large sample, roughly 300 um, subjects, who underwent sex reassignment surgery were followed and assessed for depression, anxiety, and suicide, um, suicidal ideation. Within the first 10 years, it seemed like there was some relief, but by that 10th year, there was a noticeable increase in anxiety and depression and suicidal thoughts. By 30 years out, the suicide rate among the adults who transitioned was 19 times greater than the general population. Incredibly unethical to expect that a teenager or younger has the cognitive ability to consent to drugs and procedures that could wipe out their fertility and put them at risk for deadly diseases in the long term. The best solution is family and individual therapy 
to treat that depression and anxiety to get at the underlying issues. When a child expresses any desire to self-harm, that's a cry for help, not a cry for hormones. This is a massive breach of medical ethics. No amount of uh, medication, hormones, or mutilating surgery can change your sex. Claiming that we're going to do that by um, temporarily chemically castrating them with puberty blockers, sterilizing them with the cross-sex hormones, and then mutilating healthy body parts, that's institutionalized child abuse.